All right, welcome back to my series on building a negative edge uh, skimmer return for my pond as well as an underground water storage cistern, rainwater storage cistern. Uh, I've made a lot of progress since the last time because, check this out, bam! A, uh, a friend of our family has a little 5,000 pound uh, <laughs> excavator that they just had laying around not using right now and they said I could borrow it for basically as long as I want to work on the pond which is amazing it's gonna help me in a lot of ways but it has made the uh, digging out of the uh, of the cistern a lot easier so let's take a look at what uh, what's happened since uh, the last update this is the beat up old excavator that a family friend lent to us it's making digging our pond a much easier project we affectionately named it Barney because I'd already started digging the cistern by hand, uh, one challenge I ran into is that this little mini excavator doesn't have a long enough reach to sit at one end and reach all the way to the other end of the excavation. So I had to put it in a kind of funny position to get at the rest of the cistern. One feature that made this a lot easier is this articulating boom that the Komatsu comes with. It made it really easy to dig all the way into sharp corners, even when the machine is positioned at a funny angle. Way to go, Komatsu! A few moments later. All right, I've got the negative edge basin dug out a little bit more. This is a dry fit of the milk crates just to make sure that they'll they will sit in their space. As you can see, they're kind of crooked in little spots. I'll have to get this, uh, I'll have to get the bottom of the basin um, really level and compacted to make sure they don't shift around once I put the liner in and put these crates over top of them. As you can see now, I'm uh, the top of the third crate is about a foot below the uh, soil level down. That's the low end of the excavation down there, or the low end of the grade is back down in that corner. So I'm a foot below that, so I'm a little bit more than a foot over here. And that'll give me the ability to, uh, to place a lot of dirt and landscaping on top of all of these uh, once I have uh, them all stacked in there. Of course, when I look at it like this, I'm at 2,000 gallons. Um, I think it's 252, seven. So the liner will go in here, you pull the liner tight and backfill against, as the liner comes up, each, each layer of blocks that goes in, backfill and tamp around as you go so that these all get locked in really really tight and uh, and can't move around. Here's a quick tip. Uh, however you, big you think your cistern excavation should be, you know, based on how wide and how long the blocks that you're all stacking together are going to be, dig it a foot longer and a foot wider. So you basically get six inches of extra space in every direction. And what that's going to do is make it a lot easier to lay out your blocks exactly the way that you want them, uh, to move them a little bit if you need to, to shift, the, to shift the layout just a little bit as necessary, and also give you plenty of room to add the underlayment and the liner and the next layer of underlayment that all kind of fold in on themselves a little bit and eat up a bit of space, just so it doesn't get so tight when you're trying to put this all together, because that gets kind of frustrating. Hat tip to G-Bud and Lisa K at the Garden Pond Forum for that tip. And this is the final excavation. Once the crates have been removed and the base, which is mostly sand, has been screeded flat with a four-foot torpedo level. And then you'll see up in the top left corner, there is a six-inch deep by 30-inch wide pit. That is where my large diameter, 24-inch diameter uh, pump vault will live. And it'll sit down below the base of the crates, the aqua blocks, whatever you want to call them, or milk crates, which will make sure that when the pumps are in there, they are below the, basically at the very lowest point in the cistern, so that no matter how low water gets, uh, they, they won't die until I've neglected it so long that the cistern is completely empty.